Okay, I think it's time to start. Uh, welcome everybody. Uh, this is talk about monitoring. Uh, the title is Follow the Data from the Darkest Corners of Kubernetes. Uh, we would like to show you where the data comes from, uh, what are uh, and what happens uh, with them uh, once they are collected. Uh, my name is Piotr. I'm working at Google. Uh, on GKE and Kubernetes there. In addition to this, I'm leading uh, SIG instrumentation. Uh, with me is Frederick. Uh, Frederick works for Red Hat, CoreOS, formerly CoreOS, and he's also leading SIG instrumentation. Okay, so let's start with a quick survey. Like this is the usual uh, way to start such presentation. Uh, who run production workloads here? Who is responsible for them? Who is, you know, have some, something in common with this? Hands up. Okay, I think that the majority of you. Uh, okay. Uh, the other question is uh, for those who run uh, those production workloads, uh, who has monitoring of the production workloads here? Hands up. Okay. Cool. If you answered yes to both questions, that's great. Uh, but if not, especially if you answer that you have uh, some uh, production workloads that you are responsible for and you don't have monitoring yet, it's really bad. Uh, yeah. We'll explain you how you can fill this gap. Uh, but uh, first, I will recommend you this book. This is a really great book. Uh, this, is, uh, this book is written by my colleagues from Google. Uh, it shares all our, like, okay, a lot of our uh, SRE production handling experience. Uh, that is a Google we gathered uh, for many years. Uh, one of the key success of running uh, production workloads is uh, to have a great monitoring. Uh, this is explained in this book, how to, uh, how to, you know, what are the, what principles do you, uh, do you want to have, uh, do you want to follow when handling production stuff? And the best thing for this book is that it's for free. So you can just go ahead and read it in the internet. Okay. Uh, so let's get back to Kubernetes. Uh, so a few years ago, uh, there was uh, big discussions in the community whether Kubernetes is, whether monitoring is a, is a part of core Kubernetes, and the answer is not, no. Kubernetes is not about monitoring. But it offers some monitoring capabilities, some basic monitoring capabilities. So there are components like horizontal pod autoscaler, scheduler, kubectl top, and Node, of course, uh, that requires uh, some basic monitoring in order to perform housekeeping operations and the, the, the other operations that they are responsible for. Uh, so this means that in order to have a fully working uh, Kubernetes uh, deployment, you need to have some monitoring. Yeah? So introduce metrics API, which provides those basic resource usage metrics so that horizontal pod autoscaler can scale your workloads based on the metrics that are there. Scheduler can uh, make better scheduling decision uh, using the data uh, about resource usage there. And there is also kubectl top command that uses exactly the same data uh, to make sure that you better understand uh, what's going on with your work, uh, with your containers, especially what is the research usage of them. Yeah. Metrics API is implemented by Metrics Server. Metrics Server is a system component of Kubernetes that, is, that should be deployed to every single cluster. Uh, Metrics Server periodically scrapes all nodes to get metrics from there, and then expose them using this Metrics API. It doesn't have any application level metrics, it doesn't offer any historical metrics, this is just uh, latest resource usage uh, of containers running in the cluster. 
Okay, so let's take a look into Metrics API. What's this? Uh, so basically, it, uh, it exposes uh, two types of metrics. One is about uh, node resource usage, in addition to timestamp and window, in order to identify the time period from which those metrics come from that is just resource, uh, resource usage. And there are also pod metrics. Again, the same pattern, timestamp, uh, window, and list of containers. And, 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 and for every containers, we have uh, resource usage of, of, of those containers. Okay, so let's take a look at what's going on on a node. So on every single node, there is kubelet instance running. A part of this kubelet is C advisor that is compiled into this kubelet. And there is some other API, an API exposed by kubelet that exposed metrics uh, coming from this particular node. So this means metrics about all containers running on this machine, plus metrics about system components running on this machine like kubelet, docker, kubeproxy. So th this was uh, the, the core metrics pipeline. Uh, this is how it's called. Uh, and coming back to our sentence, Kubernetes is not about monitoring. Uh, so in order to have a production-ready uh, solution, something that you want to run in a production, you need more. Uh, so in addition to this core metrics pipeline, you need some third-party monitoring solution. So in monitoring world, you can divide solutions into two categories. One is push-based model, another one is pull-based model. So there is a lot of discussions, which model is better. Uh, so push model uh, works in the way that your pod, your deployment, is responsible for delivering metrics to third-party monitoring solution. So the, the, the easiest uh, approach is that your uh, pod periodically send metrics to some third-party monitoring solution. Pull model, uh, what is in a different way, where the third-party monitoring solution is responsible for uh, scraping metrics from well-known endpoints. So usually in a loop, uh, third-party monitoring solution um, periodically uh, send requests for, met like get, uh, send, uh, get the metrics request to all known monitoring targets. Uh, so the right approach is, um, I don't know, there is, no, there is no right approach. So let's take a look into two examples of third-party monitoring solutions, one working in a pool model, another one working in a push model. So we'll take a look closer, this third-party monitoring solution. Uh, we'll start with Prometheus working in a pool model, and I'm passing mic to Frederick. Thank you. So, um, maybe first, uh, as an introduction, um, why am I qualified to, to speak on this? Um, I'm actually part of the Prometheus upstream team, um, and I actually see a couple of other people um, in the audience, so hopefully I don't say something bad about their components. Um, so, uh, Prometheus is obviously a pull model, uh, and because I work on Prometheus, I believe that's the correct thing to do. Um, no, that's not true. Um, in Prometheus, we believe that um, in order to be able to get started easily with uh, monitoring, um, pull is just the easier model uh, to do. Um, and in push-based mechanisms, um, it often, you often need to do clustering uh, in the very beginning because um, just because of how the systems work. And in Prometheus, we just wanted to keep it really simple for everyone to get started, and it's really reliable. Um, that doesn't mean that the other systems are not reliable. It just happens to um, be a bit more complicated to get started with. Um, that said, a lot of the uh, push-based mechanisms um, are SaaS vendors, so it's actually really easy for you to get started. So it's really up to you um, to decide what you want to do, um, and I'll be representing Prometheus here, and Piotr um, will la later tell you about um, the Google product. So um, to give you an overview 
what you can do with Prometheus, I want to go through all of the Kubernetes stack, basically, and uh, tell you about all the metrics uh, that you can gather in the stack and uh, what useful things you can do with that. Uh, so naturally, what I want to start with um, is the node. Um, and on the node, there is a component uh, that we call the node exporter. And uh, this is actually uh, probably what you uh, think about it. And um, it's just a, an agent running on all your uh, Kubernetes nodes and, or, or non-Kubernetes nodes. Um, and then you can collect all of the um, system level metrics. So uh, CPU, memory, file system, uh, crazy system D things. Um, really, whatever runs on your node probably has uh, the node exporter has some metrics uh, about this. And uh, one of the really useful things uh, that people like to do with this is, for example, something that causes outages in various ways is uh, file system usage. So something very uh, popular that people do with uh, the node exporter is uh, they look at the file system um, disk space that's available and uh, they want to be able to fix this problem before it actually uh, hits in. So before this node becomes useless, um, I want to be able to fix it. So Prometheus has something very neat here, which is a linear prediction. So what it does here is that you can uh, look at the, um, your individual node and see um, how much data it's been writing to disk um, in this particular example over the six, past six hours. And if um, in the next four hours, um, yes, in the next four hours, um, no, in the next 24 hours, um, this disk space is going to run out, then I want to get an alert, for example. This would be the expression that you want to do for this. Um, and in that way, you can make sure to fix those kinds of problems before they actually uh, cause an outage. And that's really useful for a var variety of things. So next, um, on the node um, that is not um, describing the entire node within your Kubernetes cluster is likely pods. And the solution today for this, and we've already seen this in uh, parts of Piotr's um, slides, um, that C Advisor is very central in uh, monitoring today in, in Kubernetes. However, uh, within SIG instrumentation, we are looking into ways um, how to replace C Advisor for something that's a bit more pluggable. For example, um, there's the effort within Kubernetes of device plugins so that we can have um, GPU vendors um, uh, supply drivers or um, any, any sort of uh, extension for Kubernetes, but at the same time, we want to make sure that they um, have the ability to expose metrics about these kinds of things. And if you're interested in, in this topic, this is something that we're discussing right now. Uh, do join uh, SIG Instrumentation. We have a deep dive later um, if you're interested in, in these topics. And this is the very link to the proposal that we have out right now. Um, and really, pods and containers uh, is what we build all our beautiful uh, dashboards with. Um, and uh, that way we can have really nice overview of our infrastructure um, and see which namespace in our cluster is maybe uh, acting up or um, basically we can slice and dice um, all of this great information and just view it uh, over our entire Kubernetes cluster and this is really useful. So now that we've more or less or, or almost covered the node, uh, let's continue with the Kubernetes uh, components because all of Kubernetes components actually expose Prometheus style metrics, which means we can collect them and alert on them or just graph them. Um, so uh, I said that because we haven't quite left the, the node because the kubelet, as you all know, um, on, in a Kubernetes cluster sits on every, every node. Um, and its purpose is to create the environment for pods and then uh, tell the container runtime uh, to actually manage those pods. So um, the kubelet itself has metrics about all the pods it manages, um, but also most importantly what uh, a lot of people have um, 
issues with, um, or I shouldn't say that, um, something um, that you would, would want to monitor is exactly this interaction from the kubelet to your container runtime. So if there are any problems, because containers um, are a complicated thing, um, you would want to maybe have a look at the errors that are happening within these interactions uh, or the latency. And uh, these things can be really important when you're maybe providing Kubernetes as a service to the rest of your organization or even selling Kubernetes um, as a service to others. And if you have uh, a service level objective of some scheduling time or some time how quickly pods must be started, then these are the kinds of metrics that you may want to look at. So now we have actually left uh, node level. Uh, and the Kubernetes API has a ton of um, responsibilities within Kubernetes. Basically, all of the traffic at some point goes through the Kubernetes API in a Kubernetes cluster. So uh, it really has to be really well monitored in order to make sure that your Kubernetes cluster stay, stays healthy. Um, and just one example that I put on here is the ability to uh, see how many, um, in terms of percentage, how much percent of the API calls that my uh, that are hitting my Kubernetes API server are erroring out with either four or five hundred errors. Um, so whether that's that's um, a useful grouping for your your case, you'll have to evaluate. But um, I'm giving you the tools to build um, your learning. Um, and now another case. Uh, of, for example, if you have an, an SLO, uh, that you need to schedule pods in a certain time. Um, this happens very often in cases where you're providing Kubernetes as a service to others, so that you can, even if you're auto-scaling your Kubernetes cluster, that you can see the end-to-end -end scheduling latency, um, so that even if you're resizing your cluster, that you know exactly, um, even if I'm adding another node, the end-to-end -end scheduling time has been four minutes or something. Whatever SLO actually makes sense for your organization is, is up for you to decide. But this is a very useful um, latency where you can see latency analysis where you can see the 99th percentile of your end-to-end -end, uh, scheduling latency. And um, going, going forward, um, when we have our Kubernetes cluster, so we have our nodes, we have our API server, we have our scheduler, and now to actually make Kubernetes useful, we have our controller manager, which manages our deployments, stateful sets, and all these great abstractions that uh, Kubernetes gives us. Um, but that also means that it heavily interacts with the Kubernetes API. So we want to make sure that not only from the side of the API server uh, we're, we're handling these things, but this is actually a metric that every single component in Kubernetes has, um, because every, every component shares the same REST client uh, implementation. So we can see that all, um, all requests that end with something that's not a su successful request over the past five minutes, um, if that has a high value, whatever high for us means, maybe it's a, maybe a percentage is better for you, um, then we can alert on something like that. Uh, so finally, now we've actually covered all the Kubernetes components themselves, and one super useful, super useful thing, at least I like to think that because I maintain it, uh, is uh, kube state metrics, um, which doesn't report status of uh, it, the component itself. So the API server tells you all the requests that have been issued against itself, whereas kube state metrics gives you metrics about the Kubernetes objects that exist. So something um, that is very common to be used here is, for example, a deployment has a number of replicas that you want it to create for your pods. Um, and then it has a status and tells you how many are actually available um, right now. So this is something that uh, a lot of people do because, um, and you've probably all done this, uh, maybe you already use kubestate metrics, but um, when people get started with Kubernetes, they often start monitoring with kubectl um, or kubectl, whatever your favorite um, pronunciation is. Um, and they check um, kubectl get 
deploy, and you see the number of uh, available and the number of non-available replicas. And all of this information actually comes from the Kubernetes API, obviously, so we can create metrics on this. And pretty much every um, object there is in Kubernetes actually has metrics like this. So it's super useful um, to create uh, alerting rules for this. Uh, and then finally, our very last component uh, in Kubernetes uh, is etcd. So etcd uh, is the, the heart of all of our operations in Kubernetes. So we really want to make sure that uh, etcd um, is healthy. So uh, does anybody know what the most common outage uh, for etcd is? Or what have you encountered? Anybody? What was that? Auto discovery. Auto discovery? Yes. Um, that disk full. Anything disk related is really what uh, what causes um, etcd to not perform in the way uh, it should be. And uh, at Chorus, we uh, develop etcd, so we have a lot of experience running etcd. And this is actually the single most common outage of uh, etcd clusters that uh, etcd, etcd simply cannot keep up with writing the write ahead log onto disk. Um, so yeah, here you go. Install uh, alerting rule in your cluster, and uh, hopefully uh, it'll prevent you from having a real outage before it's too late. So now that we've seen all of this uh, in theory, let's have a very quick look at some real data. So I have a Prometheus server um, with a ton of um, targets. So I have uh, automatically discovered all my Kubernetes components and uh, monitoring components with the Prometheus service discovery. And we can see uh, the API server, my blog, um, controller manager, scheduler, kube state metrics, the kubelets, and all of the other components uh, that we've looked at. And um, then we can use all of this wonderful data to create beautiful dashboards. And uh, we can see the utilization across our entire cluster. Or we can see it based on all of our namespaces. And we can see which namespaces. Um, we can drill down on to each namespace. Um, or once we are in that namespace that is acting up in some way, we can look at each individual pod, and so on. Uh, so this is super useful, because uh, in, at the end of the day, we can most of the time boil some problem down still to CPU or uh, a memory problem. Um, at least that's some side effect. So um, these dashboards are really useful, and I recommend everyone to either share them or uh, build them yourself, yourself if they're not. Um, good enough for yourself. Um, and also that, uh, an effort uh, that a lot of us um, in the Prometheus community have uh, been trying to uh, work on is the ability to share uh, alerting rules. Because since we're all running Kubernetes clusters, we all run the same components. So we should all be uh, experiencing the same problems. Uh, so it's really, it really what we should be doing is, as a community, we should be collaborating on these things and share share this. Um, yeah. So uh, that is it from the Prometheus side. And now, Piotr with Stackdriver. Okay. So this was an example of a uh, pull-based mo uh, pull monitoring solution uh, because Prometheus scrapes endpoints. Uh, either uh, from system components or from uh, your applications. And there is other set of monitoring solutions, third-party monitoring solution that works in the, the other model, the push model. Stackdriver is an example of, of such solution. Uh, so I will show uh, how we integrate it at Google Stackdriver with GKE. Uh, this can be a reference implement integration for other providers as well. Uh, so we have a Kubernetes cluster. We have some nodes. On top of the picture, uh, there is um, various Stackdriver APIs. Stackdriver works as a SaaS, so it's offered your, your APIs. You can go there and see your data and metrics. Uh, 
So uh, metrics are collected in two, two ways. Uh, Hipster is pushing resource usage metrics, those system level metrics to uh, stack driver. Uh, so we use uh, we use the 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 the, the, the common uh, solution for this purpose uh, for stack for application level metrics. Uh, we have some integration with Prometheus so that Prometheus scraper scrapes metrics from your application exactly the same way as as the Prometheus stack does, and then metrics are uh, eventually sent to stack driver monitoring. The second piece of the integration is metadata. How do we collect those metadata? So on every single node, we have a stack driver metadata agent deployed. So this is a Kubernetes daemon set, uh, which basically watch objects from Kubernetes API, uh, computes uh, interesting information for us, and send them to a stack driver uh, metadata API. And the third piece of this integration is logging. Uh, so we have Stackdriver logging agent, which is FluentD. FluentD is deployed uh, on every uh, Kubernetes node within the same daemon set that uh, Stackdriver metadata agent is deployed to, and is pushing all those logs to Stackdriver logging API. In addition to this, you can imagine also that just your application can uh, send the data to, to Stackdriver directly. And uh, there is also an effort uh, in the community. I don't know whether this is, this is, uh, this is probably under CNCF, yes? Uh, to standardize uh, metrics format uh, for the whole cloud world. So there's multiple companies involved around the world. Uh, I don't know the details about this. There is what? What's the name, Fre Frederick? Do you know? Uh, open metrics. Yeah, there is open metrics standard uh, that is being designed right now. Uh, it's on on GitHub, so you can find this effort as well. And Stackdriver uh, also offers some dashboards based on the data that are uh, delivered to to Stackdriver. Uh, Google just announced the new. Uh, stack driver uh, monitoring for GKE for Kubernetes uh, product. And here are the dashboards. Uh, so coming back to our uh, original uh, motto that Kubernetes is not about monitoring. Uh, however, uh, we have core metrics pipeline there. We have third party monitoring solution. The question is basically how to connect third party monitoring solution with Kubernetes. So the answer is custom metrics API. This is an API that is a part of Kubernetes, but doesn't, Kubernetes doesn't offer any implementation of this API. So this was an innovative approach uh, because before every single Kubernetes API had a default implementation and now we just introduced an API and it apps to third party monitoring vendor uh, to provide this implementation. There is a few such implementation already and more are coming. That's it, thank you very much. Any questions? No questions? If you want to learn more, uh, come to SIG Instrumentation Deep Dive today. We'll dig into internals of the, all, all the uh, components that we explain here. Thank you very much.